Human bones that have been defleshed by other humans go as far back as 600,000 years. It might seem strange to think about how early humans would eat each other, but research has shown that in some cases it was easier for them to eat their own than to hunt animals. In today's video, we're going to look into the evidence and scientific studies that show how cannibalism was part of our early ancestors' lives. Let's take a deep dive into the eerie shadows of human evolution, uncovering the chilling secrets of our cannibalistic ancestors. Homo antecessor was a species that lived in the ancient areas that would later be known as Europe. This was a species that showed a strong desire to survive. Their need to survive was so strong that fights over territory between two competing groups sometimes led to extreme actions driven by their natural instincts. If there was a rich valley in their territory, full of animals and green plants, which both groups highly valued and saw as essential to their survival, the possibility of territorial dispute was on the table. Let's say the tension between the two bands reached a breaking point one fateful morning. The head of a particular band was set on doing whatever it took to keep control of the valley. Their leaders end up in a bloody battle. Other members of the disputing bands join in, leaving bloodstains on the ground, both sides engaged in a primal struggle for dominance. In a fit of desperation, one member violently takes the infant of a mother nearby, and with a horrible turn of events, they were brutally murdered in an act that was intended to convey a terrible message. The conflict's after effects left that particular band permanently damaged. The winning group looked over the prizes of their victory as the dust fell on the battlefield. With the fury and anger from the battle, they marched back to feast on the fallen enemies. With skillful hands, they began to work, cleaving the flesh with stones fashioned into primitive tools. Their activities were a sour sight on the stage of nature's theater as they sliced away slices of meat driven by hunger and the basic urge to survive and dominate. Meanwhile, another kind of inquiry was taking place in the calm hills of science. By assembling historical hints, archaeologists and anthropologists can comprehend the complexities of early human behavior by discovering ancient relics. Bones with obvious evidence of cannibalism, marks carved into the very fabric of history, were among their discoveries. For example, at an archaeological site called Gow's Cave in southwestern England, human bones that are approximately 15,000 years old bear unmistakable signs of cannibalism like butchering marks and human tooth imprints that suggest even the end of toes and rib bones were gnawed to get at every last bit of grease and marrow. This aided scientists to uncover the sinister reality concealed behind the layers of time by carefully analyzing the patterns our forefathers left behind. Through a variety of techniques, including chemical analysis, experimental archaeology, and microscopic inspection, experts were able to solve the puzzle of cannibalistic markings. Chemical evidence revealed information about the preparation and consumption of human flesh, whereas microscopic fractures and scratches on the surface of bones suggest the tools used for butchery. Experiments shed more light on the strategies used by Homo antecessor in their search for food as scientists were able to learn firsthand about the difficulties and skills of our early ancestors by emulating old tools and techniques. The tale of Homo antecessor cannibalism came out of the shadows of prehistory thanks to the convergence of archaeology, anthropology, and forensic science. It is a story buried deep in our shared history, one of survival and despair. 80 specimens of Homo antecessor, both young adults and children, were found in the Grand Dolina exhibit. These species show signs of cannibalism, such as fractures and cut marks, and they are also known as the second most prevalent species with butchering evidence. Most bones are likely broken or otherwise severely injured. There are no whole skulls. The face and back of the cranium are typically broken the facial and base of the skull muscle attachments were severed, and severe facial alteration was most likely done to gain access to the brain. The impact scars on the teeth near the gum line are most likely the consequences of something striking the crown of the skull. A number of the skull fragments had peeled. They also exhibit incisions down the length of the rib, which may be connected to disembowelment, and the ribs also have cut marks along the muscle attachments that are compatible with defleshing. The head and neck 
were most likely severed from the body and the nape muscles were severed. The vertebrae were frequently pounded, peeled and sliced. To disconnect the shoulder, all of the clavicle muscles were sawed off. And it's most likely that to remove the bone marrow, the femur was broken. There is varying evidence of pounding, cutting or peeling on the hands and feet, which is probably due to dismemberment. In some, just the meatier sections were eaten well, the remainder was thrown out. This implies that they were killing people for food, although the average face of a homo antecessor has a lot more cut marks than an animal's face does. This is usually taken to indicate exocannibalism, a type of ceremonial cannibalism in which a person eats a member of a tribe that is not their own, an adversary from across the border. It is observed in prehistoric and modern human specimens. However, in 1999, a particular Spanish paleontologist named Yolanda Fernandez Yalvo and colleagues reviewed the evidence of homo antecessor cannibalism. Instead, they explained the relative abundance of facial cut marks in the homo antecessor sample, pointing out that the structure of the muscle attachments in humans and typical animal prey items differ significantly, meaning it took more cuts to deflesh a human face or the butchers were less experienced in defleshing humans. However, the specimens found were devoid of mature individuals. They compromised only youths and young people. It was also postulated that they were engaging in exocannibalism and consumed fellow tribesmen who were already dead of natural causes, war or accidents, possibly just to avoid wasting food, given the high youth mortality rates in modern hunter-gatherer groups. While cannibalistic behavior among early human predecessors, such as Homo antecessor, may have been motivated by territorial disputes, there are other possible explanations as well. Among these would be nutritional stress. In situations where food was hard to come by and resources were limited, cannibalism might have been a desperate attempt to gain much needed nourishment. Eating the flesh of other humans may be a source of protein and other nutrients needed to survive during the times of famine or food shortages. Some researchers propose that cannibalism may have been part of ritualistic or ceremonial practices within early human societies. These rituals could have served various purposes, including honoring the deceased or displaying dominance or submission. In some cases, cannibalism may have been driven by practical considerations, such as the disposal of corpses or the utilization of all available resources. Consuming the remains of deceased individuals could have served as a means of waste management or a way to use protein-rich tissue that would otherwise go to waste. There are several museums around the world where one can find fossils and artifacts related to early human ancestors, including Homo antecessor. Some notable museums with relevant collections will include the Natural History Museum in London, which has an extensive collection of fossils, including specimens related to human evolution. They often feature exhibitions and displays showcasing early human ancestors and their archaeological remains. Museo Nacional de Ciencias Naturales, the museum in Madrid, houses a significant collection of fossils and archaeological finds, including remains attributed to Homo antecessor from the sites such as Atapurka. And lastly, we see the Neanderthal Museum located in Germany. Although it is primarily focused on Neanderthals, this museum also covers the broader context of human evolution, including early hominids like Homo antecessor. They feature exhibitions on early human ancestors and their archaeological remains. Researchers have questioned the fact of why these species engaged in cannibalism when there seemed to be other options, and this led them to determine how many calories Homo antecessor would need each day. They conducted research and concluded that although humans offered a reasonably nutrient-dense meal, other animals had considerably more calories per bite. So therefore, hunters would still profit if they had to expand less energy to capture human prey. In exploring prehistoric cannibalism, We've learned that human ancestors, like Homo antecessor, practiced cannibalism 600,000 years ago. As a survival tactic, amid scarcities and conflicts, evidence of bones show desperate measures for survival, with cannibalism possibly driven by necessity or ritualistic practices. Research and museum displays worldwide provide insights into this aspect of human evolution, revealing a struggle for existence where consuming human flesh was a grim reality.